don't know what to say, guys. I've been here five minutes at Finch Farm. I've had a, I've had a run on the trout pellets. Struck into it so hard, it's a wonder I didn't come back with a pair of nips. And look what I've got. I've got, I've got a broken rod, and I'm sure to lose the fish. Sure to. Absolutely. Has anybody ever fought any fish like this? with a broken rod. I've got no choice. I've got absolutely no choice. I know it's a catfish. It's a howling wind. I don't know if you hear anything. It's about to tip down. A huge black cloud's coming. And there's a black cloud over me as well. It's not a monster fish. I've no idea. This is the rod I got. I think for either nothing or a pound out the skip. That is now totally broken. I'll try and wheel the camera around because I'm sure I'm sure I'm going to lose this fish. I've got no choice but to try and Oh no, don't go in there. Oh, he's burying in the weed. The first chance I get, people, I'm going to take it. If he's, he might do me a favour if he stays in some weed. He's in some weed, I can see the catfish tail. He's trying to bury, it doesn't look good. Maybe I get lucky. <laughs> what? Lucky or what? The broken rock. <laughs> the state I'm in. That's unbelievable. He's on the net, in the net, around the net. God, he's not a bad old fish, guys. Let's get him up here. Look at the rod. It snapped like a carrot. Well, here's the fish. I thought you going to see this. I mean, was that lucky, lucky, lucky? I just, I, for some reason, I did some bizarre strike. It's not a big fish. Hook's just hanging there, hooked out. Let's move the broken rod, which is, by the way, folks, here in two pieces. I'll probably turn it into a spinning rod. And <laughs> look, the ring's falling off as well. What a state to get in. I don't know how big it is. You guys tell me. We're putting on the scales, probably about five, six pounds, something like that. Great catfish. I'm happy enough with that. Maybe it's about, I don't know, maybe it'll go seven pounds. I've got to watch the rain here. Really pleased with that. Man alive. It was just a hunch I had to come over here before this low pressure hits. I'm on the edge of a hurricane. I thought there'd be nobody else fishing. Can you blame them? But what a hunch. It paid off big time. Great fish. Probably, you might go seven, eight pounds, something like that. What am I going to fish with now? I'm going to have to fish with the broken rod, guys. I've got no choice. Get the fish back, can I have to fish on with that? Oh, please don't go off bobbing. I think the other one's going as well. That's got a lunch of meat on it. Let's get this guy back. What a result, what a hunch. Last minute fishing. Man, can it work for you sometime? Obviously, the autumn's the time to do it. Let's get him back. Here he goes, Mr. Catfish. Back you go. Well, there is the break, which I thought was around about the ferrule, but do you know where it's broken? Look. This is really interesting. Anybody's making their own rods. It's broken right where that rod ring, the legs go onto the blank itself. Right there, like that. So that's where it snapped. So I reckon, and this used to be a problem years ago, if you wind those on too tight and you whip the rings on too tightly, I mean really, really stupidly tight, that creates a, let's say, nearly three inches of rigidity in a blank that should bend. So that should be flexing slightly through there, through all those rings, and it's not. So I think that was probably a fault in the build of this rod. Thankfully, it was either nothing or a pound, but plus it's messed my session up now because I'm going to have to go back to the car, get some gaffer tape or something, try and tape this together because I'm not fishing with one rod, not when the weather's got storms coming in, and I've just had a tape within like 10 minutes. Back to the car, see if I can make some running repairs, just lash this together somehow. That's what almost certainly has done that, that rod ring being whipped too tight and make a rigid area on the blank. Beware of that if you build your own rods. Guys, it's tipping, tipping down, it's really black up there. I've just put lunch of meat out and I've got another fish on here. It's another catfish. I'm gonna get soaked, hope you don't get it out. I'm going to have to bring them other... Oh, what a scrapper. I don't know how much of this you'll get. Oh, bigger fish. Come on, don't fall off. 
is in the weed. Guys, I can't bring the camera out. It's just going to tip down. I just dare bring it out. You have to trust me, it's a little bit bigger this one. Come on, fish. Why do they fight so hard and make life awkward? Too late, people. Number two's in the net. Guys, don't know if you're going to see this one. Defo, a bigger one. Yeah. Nice cat. Might go. Might go no, nines. What do you think, people? Around the nine pound or so. God, this weather's awful, but they are on the bike big time. A nice fish. Holy cow, the reed bed's coming in. I dare move the camera too much. One quick squirt there. It's going to tip down. There you go. One on lunch of me. And one on pellet. Let's get it back and get that camera undercover. It's about to throw it down. Here we go guys, third one, middle of a rainstorm on trout pellet, obviously just a slammer, I missed another one, they are on the bike big time, come here before I have blanks and now I've had four fish and hooked three, god, in an hour, here comes the rain again, I've got to watch this camera, beautiful fish, don't know what he weighs, not worry, it's another catfish. Well, just briefly, the wind of the rain's died down. I'll just show you what I'm using here. I don't understand this catfishing business. They tell me to, to leave plenty of time, to let them run with the bait and all this business. The few times I've done it, I've nailed them. As soon as that bobbin started rising, I'm not waiting for any bait runner. I'm not waiting for any back one. I'm hitting it, and I've, I've missed one today. Running ledger, just a simple Arsley bomb there. Runs up and down. Swivel. GR500 braid, I don't know what braking strain it is, but it's nice and thick, thick braid as seen in our previous video. Hook and my way of elasticating, we're using bait fishing elastic, which the shore fishermen use. Well, I use it all the time, beach fishing for binding baits on. It stretches enormously, wind it round and round, tie it off, black it so it matches, you know, using a felt bit pen, felt marker. Obviously, it makes no difference whatsoever when it's dark or in coloured water. It just keeps fishermen happy, I suppose, I think. Wow, the catfish in the cart can't see the white. Well, they won't at not a dark, will they, when it's pitch black? So there is what I'm using. It's got lunch meat on the other one. Oh, wait till you see the way I rig the lunch meat. Most unusual. I don't think it's ever been done before. I want to get this puppy out there, because I feel another cat coming. Okay, so here is the secret, totally awesome way of putting large cubes of lunch meat on without putting the hook into the bait and without hair rigging it. Bait elastic again, the good old sea fishing bait elastic. Leave a little tag in there. Go gently, just stretching the elastic because it will cut into the meat. Three, four, five, six times. I like to keep it dead level. Snap the surplus off. And then I just tie a simple couple of overhand knots on there. It's so stretchy. It's not like tricky to tie, it's just fiddly is the word I want to use. Getting that overhand loop in there, like that. You can bind it round and around, you know, and it pinches into the bait, but this way you can cast a little bit farther, because I mean, lunch of me is quite a softish bait, and I like it, I like it because it's soft, because if you do hook it with the hook in the meat, it will actually go through it. There you go, there's my little parcel. And the meat, if I tie it quite, tight the elastic actually does sort of nip into the meat there you see it boing I could almost stay here and play with that like a yo-yo simple things for simple minds eh 
Then he says lean forward. Go watch this other bobbin out there with a the pellet on it. My hook, this is one I prepared earlier, does not go through the bait. It goes under the bait elastic, through a bit of meat, and just I'll get it right through. That's actually cut right into it. There it is. Now I can pull that and it comes out of the meat, but it's resting on the elastic. You can see that there, and I pull it right to the edge of the meat. Anything that comes along will hopefully pick up that hook as well. So that's what I'm using for the lunch of meat. And I missed another one just now, which is why I'm now baiting up. Fingers crossed, we're going to get yet another catfish. People, I'm on again. I cannot believe it. Catfish crazy here. This one's well in the weed. Uh, I've got a catfish rod here that Mick's lent me. It's got a high hand hold here. I've put my hand right at the top. I've probably got 42 pounds of weed on here. What the hell is it? It's another nice catfish. <laughs> I'm going to whiz this one here, guys. Just take a gamble. I'm not going to drop the rod uh, and and or the camera. I'm hoping you're seeing that. A finch farm catfish, possibly about to ping off, but at least I caught it. Number four. Let's get it in the net. There you can see people, the size of the mouth, you can see the big barbels it's got here and just inside there is the ridge which is very rough and that's where they grip their fish and it's a fair old mouth, it has no trouble with a, a trout pellet, a halibut pellet or a big piece of our lunch of meat. Wow, what a session, four catfish and it's the most horrific weather forecast I think I've fished in for a long time. Do I care? And am I going home? You people should know the answer to that. No. It's a howling wind. I'm actually shivering. But up you come, chummy. Yes, another catfish bites the dust. Or rather the neck. What a good scrap off this one as well. We're right in the rush is the reed. Actually, I thought I'd lost it, so I was very lucky there. And I'm grateful to Mick, that's on his rod, for lending me that. It's actually a pro catfish rod or something for a giant catfish, which certainly has no problem with this guy. But I think the other one that I taped together probably wouldn't have held up. Brilliant session. Get it back. Cast guys, I'm gonna pack up at 7:30 and it's 29 minutes past. It's game on again. I've no idea. I don't think it's a big fish, but a catfish is a catfish, isn't it? Here he is. No, he's not a big one, but they all count. At least this one's clear of the weed. Man, the hook's just hanging there. It's just hanging there. I'm gonna go on backwind for this one. Come on, baby. Five catfish in one session can't be bad. Well, there we go. Folks, it's not a big fish, I guess. If 
five pounds, something like that. Maybe six pounds. On lunch of meat, sort of 50-50 between pellets and lunch of meat. And as it's got towards dusk, I definitely think I've had more takes and beeps, albeit they could have been from carp, on the lunch of meat. Great session. I can't wait for next summer and do it when it's warm and I don't get hypothermia. <laughs>